Hey everyone, so this is going to be the first video uh, where we actually are going to start discussing the math stuff. Like I said, last week was all kind of review uh, from Algebra 1. Uh, I wanted to make a quick comment. Uh, as I said before, I'm going to be posting these videos through Canvas. So you watch them, answer the questions involved. There's going to be a worksheet that's going to be attached to each of these videos. You're expected to fill them out and submit them as well. Um, though those will be due uh, probably the following day it's gonna have things like homework questions individual work guided work all that stuff All right. now the first thing that we're talking about is polynomials that's actually this first unit is all about polynomials now today's lesson we're gonna talk about how to add polynomials some of you may already know this stuff but uh, for those who don't it'll again be a nice refresher or a learning experience. Now before we can actually discuss polynomials, adding, subtracting, multiplying, all that stuff, we have to go through some algebra vocabulary. So the first one's very basic. A numerical symbol refers to a symbol that represents a specific number. Now the numerical symbols that you're used to, one, two, three, four, they're actually called uh, Arabic numerals. Uh, comes from the Middle East, so um, a good piece of uh, tidbit information for those who didn't know. Uh, but except for those, there's also Roman numerals. So you might have seen things like this. Um, Roman numerals, if anyone watches uh, football, you might see something that looks like this. These are Roman numerals, and they're giving. Uh, they're also representing numbers. So both of these are different types of numerical symbols. Obviously, we're using the Arabic numerals in this class. All right. The next one for algebra is the variable. So a variable is just referring to a letter that can act as a placeholder. So examples of these are x, y, z, a, b, c. Basically, once again, they're. Um, they're letters of the alphabet that are being used as uh, a place where we can put numbers in there at some point. So you can have something that says 5x, and then x could be anything. It could be 1, 2, 3, any number between negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, next one is algebraic expression. So this is another uh, phrase that you'll probably hear. Again, some of these things is more uh, we're going over mainly so that you, when you hear either me say it or you hear a question say it, you're not completely confused what that's referring to. So an algebraic expression is a numerical symbol or a variable symbol using one of the four operations. Uh, the four operations, as you should know, are addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So good examples of these. Oh, and um, a big thing though is that it can't have an equal sign. If it has an equal sign, it's no longer an algebraic expression and it becomes an equation. So this is an algebraic expression. 2 times x plus 8. Uh, this is another example. 15x squared minus 4x and 5x plus 7 minus 4. All of these have a combination of numerical symbols like the 5 and variable symbols like x and they have combinations of uh, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication over here and again there's no equal sign. So just something that you, uh, a phrase that you should know. Constant refers to a fixed value. Um, going back to our algebraic expression examples that I gave you uh, all the numerical numbers are uh, constants essentially because the 2 is representing a constant value it's the same regardless now go now we're turning into the polynomial section so uh, you might hear this phrase uh, every now and then um, monomial is basically referring to an algebraic expression that only has multiplication so these are examples of monomials. All right, 5x squared, 8x, 12x cubed. There's no other addition, subtraction, or anything like that. Now, binomials are when we take two monomials, so two expressions that only have multiplication, and we add 
or subtract them. So we actually say that it's the sum of two monomials. So again, here's some examples. 5x squared plus 8x. This is a binomial because we have one algebraic expression here and we have one here. So one, two. Same thing here. One algebraic expression, two algebraic expressions. Uh, we can kind of use a more umbrella term, uh, call it polynomial, is usually referring to any number of monomials. So this could be one monomial, or it could be two, three, four, it doesn't matter. Uh, the big thing though is that each uh, monomial is going to be called a term. So going back to here, these are all examples of polynomials. So this has a single term polynomial, this would be a two term polynomial, and this would be a three term polynomial. All right. So you're, we're probably not going to call these uh, expressions binomials and monomials too often. Uh, I'll probably go straight to saying, calling them polynomials because again it's a nice umbrella term. Um, so once you hear that you should just know that you're coming up with an equation like this that has multiple terms in it. Uh, the coefficient of a monomial uh, is usually referring to the numerical symbol that's in front of whatever the monomial you have is. So in here when we have 5x squared plus 8x the 5 is the coefficient for this expression the 8 is the coefficient in this expression in this term. Uh, same thing here the 13 is the coefficient for this term and the 12 is the coefficient in that term. All right. The next one is the phrase like terms. So like terms is referring to uh, polynomials where you have multiple parts, multiple terms uh, that have the same variable and the variables are all raised to the same power. So in my uh, polynomial here I have two terms that are like terms. So 4x and 9x are like terms because they both have an x that have uh, no power. Like it's not raised to any specific number. Uh, likewise 12x cubed and 1x cubed are like terms because once again they have the same variable x and they uh, both of them are raised to the same power. Something like this 9xy plus 4x, this uh, may not be considered a like term because of the fact that uh, this does not have a y involved. Uh, standard form, so whenever you have a polynomial, uh, the standard form is going to be when it's written in such a way so that it's descending order from highest power to lowest power. Uh, before I show you an example, if you look up here, this is not in standard form because we have uh, x to the fourth here, the next term is x to the one, and then I go back up to x cubed. So this is not standard form. Uh, if I'd want it in standard form, I'd have to have all the x cubes uh, right after this x to the fourth, and then this would have to be pulled to the end. Um, another thing is that usually with standard form, uh, this is the form that they want you to put it in whenever you see the phrase simplify. So simplify is going to refer to uh, combining all the like terms. So combining all the x cubes together, all the single x's, and then rewriting it in standard form. So this is an example of uh, writing a polynomial in standard form because we have x to the fourth, x to the cubed, x, and then nothing no x. So this is a perfect example of standard form. Uh, the leading term, so when uh, sometimes you might hear this phrase of looking for the leading term of a polynomial, this is going to refer to the term that ends up having the highest exponent. Now of course if you write your equation, your polynomial, in standard form, this will be the first term in the polynomial, hence why it's called the leading term. Um, in this scenario, so I went back and I used uh, one of the 
non-standard form polynomials, but the leading term will end up being this x to the fourth one. Uh, you have some other terms that are referring to this, like the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient is referring to the the coefficient of the leading term. I mean, it, it's kind of in its name. But again, uh, the idea is that if you take an equation, you write it into standard form, which this is not in standard form, uh, but it would end up being the first coefficient that you see. So um, even though this is not in standard form, I do have the leading term in front so it ends up uh, working out that the 3 will also be uh, my leading coefficient. Again usually you take a polynomial you rewrite it into standard form and then it's that that front coefficient. Uh, and then we also have this thing called polynomial degree so this is referring to the highest exponent in the polynomial. Once again if you had it written in standard form it's going to be the very first term's exponent. So here, uh, if I look in that common uh, example that I gave, um, the x to the fourth, that fourth power is the highest exponent, so we would call this a fourth degree polynomial. All right, And that's pretty much all the vocab terms. So hopefully you've written these down, um, because again, you're, you're going to be seeing them pop up in questions you'll be hearing me say it, you want to know what I'm referring to. You want to know what I mean when I say, okay, which one of these is a second degree polynomial or um, which one has the correct leading term. All right, so uh, write those down, make sure that you know it, uh, and then we're going to actually go on into the, the next part where we're actually going to talk about adding polynomials. So when we decide that we want to add polynomials, uh, it's important to remember that we can only combine like terms. Remember, like terms means same variable and same exponent. So same exponent. And uh, when we add, we're going to be adding the coefficients. So uh, an example for this, let's say we had 9x squared minus 5x squared. So these are like terms. They have the same variable x and the same exponent too. So when I combine this, I'm going to combine the 9 and the 5 because these are um, the coefficients that I'm going to combine. So ignoring the x squared, adding the coefficients, I get 9 minus 5. Well, if you most of you should know this, but it should end up being 4x squared. So this would be me adding the polynomials. Now I know I'm actually subtracting here, but it ends up being uh, essentially the same thing. Oh. So let me actually get rid of some of this. Now I want you to try doing some of these questions. Uh, I know I messed up in the ordering here, so let me fix that. So this is choice C, and this is going to be choice D. Uh, I want you to tell me which of these would we be able to add. All right. So pause video, working myself. We'll go in for a second. All right. So the only ones that we'd be able to add would be this one. Uh, these are the only two that are like terms because they have the same variable a, b. Now uh, going back to here, this one uh, they have no common variable so this would be wrong. Uh, and choice b and d, uh, they do share one common variable but the problem is they don't share a second common variable as well. They don't share all of the same variables. So we wouldn't be able to consider them like terms, and we wouldn't really be able to add them. All right. So uh, we're going to do these together. Uh, but first, what I want you to do is work on this yourself. Um, you'll put your answers into the Edpuzzle account, and then we'll go over it together. All right. So uh, this first question, 
they're telling us that we're taking negative 8xy and it's increased by 7xy. So this is going to be, I can rewrite this as negative 8xy plus 7xy. These are like terms because they both have xy, the same variables, and they have the same exponents, 1. So now I'm going to combine their coefficients. So if you don't know the answer off the top of your head, what you could do is use a calculator because don't forget you do have access to calculators on the test. Uh, and sometimes it's always good to just do a really quick calculation on it just to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes. But you combine these uh, the coefficients, negative 8 plus 7, and you end up getting negative 1xy. And there you go. That's how you do number one. All right, number two, simplify. So again, we're going to combine all the like terms here. First, let's start with the like term of this. The only other one that shares x squared would be this one. So uh, I can do this real quick. I'm going to combine their coefficients. I have a 3 here and a 7 over here. 3 plus 7 gives me 10. So combining those two like terms gives me 10x squared. Then I have, I'm going to try to use a different symbol here, 5x and 8x. So negative 5x plus 8. Again, I'm combining the coefficients. And for this one, I get plus 3 x and then plus 9 minus 15 because neither of those have uh, a variable so combining plus 9 minus 15 I get negative 6 and that's pretty much it uh, I actually do also have this in standard form so there we go it's nice uh, some quick questions I can ask are things like what degree polynomial is this? And what is the leading coefficient? Right. So as far as the degree, this would be considered a second degree polynomial because the highest exponent is 2 and the leading coefficient is going to be 10 because that's what's in front of my x squared, the my leading term. Right? Now, another practice set of questions. So pause video work itself, and we'll go over it in a second. All right, so once again, I'm going to do the same thing. Here, though, I have multiple terms or sections to look at, uh, but it ends up going to be pretty much the same thing as question two, just a little bit longer. So the 7x squared, the next like term is minus 2x squared, and the next one is 5x squared. Seven minus 2 plus 5 gives me 10 x squared. Um, let me switch to a different color. So the next terms are going to be minus 8 x plus 3 x minus 10 x. So my, um, I'm going to do negative 8 plus 3 minus 10 and this time I get minus 15 X when I combine those parts let's get a different color for this next one and then the last terms to combine negative 4 plus 5 negative 8 so once again combining all these I end up getting minus 7 so this ends up being my simplified uh, polynomial after combining all of these. Uh, question four, so same thing. I'm combining this term and this term because they do tell me it's a sum. So 9x minus 3x is going to be the first term I combine. Adding the coefficients, I have 9 minus 3. So that's going to be 6x. 
and then the 4y and the minus 2y combining the coefficients 4 minus 2 ends up giving me plus 2y um, in, in an equation like this there really is no um, standard form type of way uh, they both have the same uh, power so you wouldn't it didn't doesn't matter whether you have the y first or the x first me personally in a case like this I tend to like to keep it in alphabetical order so I usually like to have the x's first followed by the y's but uh, for something like this it would be up to you and you would never be asked a question like a leading term or a leading uh, coefficient um, and that's that's pretty much it I think we have a few more questions to practice but um, that's that's the main gist of this entire part the one thing that you have to pay attention for are the negative values in front of the coefficients those get tacked on with the uh, the term so they're part of the term so make sure that you don't uh, miss them All right. so this is gonna be the exit question so the question that I want you to uh, work on and submit through Edpuzzle uh, so I'll just read it really quickly so this image here is the question that Sandra is assigned for homework uh, and this is actually the work that she ends up doing her friend John actually looks at her work before she hands it in and tells her that she made a mistake that the problem was done incorrectly now what I want you to do is looking at this and using what we talked about ex uh, explain why John said that her work was wrong all right so think about what we talked about and we'll uh, go over this later all right if you have any questions please let me know send me a message on my mind like I said make sure that you fill out those worksheets go along with it because they are going to be considered part of the notes and are going to be very useful as far as review things all right see you later and uh, have a good day